Okay, so first things first, you're going to want to zoom both of your photos or your clips into their original size. Now, with your mouse or your keyboard, right click and then select pre-compose. Copy the settings that I'm doing. You're going to want to pre-compose both clips or both photos, whichever one you're using. Now once that's done, go over to the left and turn on your motion blur, just like that. You just tap on it or drag down if you have multiple clips. Now go to the effects and presets and type in motion tile. My computer's a little slow, so it's just loading up. Sorry for the delay. You're going to want to make both the output width and the output height 300. And when you're done with that, select mirror edges. Right click and copy that effect and either control or command V and paste it onto your next clip. Now tap S on your keyboard and the scale will pop up. You're gonna wanna tap on the little clock at the very beginning. Now go to or around the end of your clip and just go to scale and zoom it in as much as you'd like. When you're done, make sure to move the keyframe all the way to the end or else it's gonna look choppy. Now highlight over or drag over these keyframes and select this graph. You're going to want to make sure you have it selected on value graph, so just right click and if yours looks like mine, just select value graph. Just drag these little yellow things the exact way I am. This will create your in graph. Just tap back up on that little graph up there to exit out of this. Go on to your next clip and click S on your keyboard again. Tap on the little stopwatch to add a keyframe and make it about 45 or 50. I cut it out but I actually ended up making it 50 instead because it looked a little choppy. Now go to the end of your clip, right click on the little scale percentage and just hit reset. And once again you're going to want to highlight those keyframes. Go back to the graph editor and tap on it and then select this little thing that I'm selecting and pull the little yellow things the exact way I am. This will create your out graph. And that's it, you've just created a zoom in transition. Make sure you have both of your clips pre-composed just like I showed you to do in the last clip. Add motion tile onto your clip and make both the output width and height 300. Right click and copy and paste that onto your next clip by using Control V or Command V. Tap S on your keyboard and tap the little stopwatch at the very beginning. Go to the very end of your clip and make it about 50 or 45 or so. Select or highlight these keyframes and tap on this graph. Tap on the little white mini graph at the bottom too and pull it exactly the way I am so this creates your in graph. Now go on to your next clip and select S on your keyboard. Add a keyframe and zoom your photo in. There's no exact amount needs to be set to. Go to the end of your clip and right click on the percentage and hit reset. Highlight your keyframes. Go to the graph editor and just like we did before, select the mini graph and pull the yellow little things exactly the way I am. And now you're done. You've just created a zoom out transition. Make sure you have motion blur on and add on motion tile just like we've been doing. Make the width and the height 300 and select mirror edges. Right click and copy this effect and paste it onto your other clip. Tap P on your keyboard to bring up the position and add a keyframe at the beginning. Go to the very end of your clip and slide it exactly like I am. You can check the values if you want, but I usually just wing it. Make sure to move your last keyframe all the way to the end and then select your clips. Now don't get confused, tap on the graphs and hit X and Y over here. Click off so they're not highlighted and then just select X. This will bring up the normal graph which you just tap on and then hit that little mini graph down there and then you can just make your graph exactly like mine. I hope I'm doing a good job at explaining this because it can get a little tricky so if you need just slow down the video.
Now it's time to create the second part of our transition, so go on to your second clip and select P on your keyboard. Add a keyframe there and slide it the complete opposite way of what you did the first time. Go to the end of your clip and go to like the position scales or whatever, right click on those and just hit reset. Now just do the exact same thing for the graph as you did the first time. Highlight them, select the little graph icon, go to X and Y, and select X. Now just tap on the graph and make the out graph just like I am. And now you're done. Just a reminder, make sure you have motion tile enabled and motion blur on. Tap P on your keyboard and this time we're going to use the Y position. So add a keyframe at the beginning and one at the end and slide it down. When you're done sliding it, make sure to move your keyframe all the way to the end of your clip. Highlight those keyframes and go to the graph editor. Tap X and Y and select Y and copy the graph that I'm doing. Go to your next clip and select P on your keyboard. Keyframe Y and slide it the opposite way you did the first time. Go to the end of your clip, go to the Y position, right click and hit reset. Highlight your keyframes and go to the graph editor. Select Y and copy my out graph. And you're done. For this last transition, make sure you have motion tile and motion blur enabled, just like I do. Tap R on your keyboard and add a keyframe at the beginning, and go to the end of your clip and add another one, and make the degrees 180. Highlight those keyframes and copy the graph that I'm doing. If you get confused, I zoomed in and showed exactly what you need to select. Go on to your second clip and hit R on your keyboard. On your first keyframe, make it negative 180. Go to the end of your clip and right click on the value and just hit reset. Or you can just make it zero, it's really up to you. Highlight your keyframes and go to the graph editor and create the off graph that I'm doing. And now you're done.